Let's study about the new chapter called Rural Life and Society. Let's learn about revenue collection during the Mughal times. We learned that Mughal Empire had a centralized revenue collection system. Land was assessed. Tax was calculated on that basis of assessment. One third of the produce was generally collected as tax. The Mansabdari system created a class of officials who were responsible for revenue collection. They were a part of central administration. At the provincial and village levels too, they were officials appointed for the task. However, the efficiency of this system gradually declined as the Mughal Empire began to crumble. At this time, the system of Ijara farming was introduced. Under this system, tax collectors were appointed to collect the tax. They could keep one tenth of the tax for themselves. So they were tempted to exploit the peasants and collect more tax for their benefits. Revenue collectors position became hereditary. Zamindars did not have the ownership of the land. They could collect only the revenue. Although farmers were extremely dependent on the climate and the rains, but still villages managed to attain a level of self-sufficiency. Sir Although irrigation facilities were provided by the rulers, but they did not meet the farmers' needs completely. Revenue systems under the British When the British received the Diwani of Bengal, they felt the need to work out a revenue collection system. Initially, the revenue was collected on behalf of Reza Khan, but this system was soon abandoned due to corruption and mismanagement. A series of famines ravaged Bengal during this period. However, the revenue collection was still being carried out very ruthlessly. At this stage, the East India Company decided to start collecting the revenue directly. The first Governor General, Warren Hastings, he decided to auction the revenue collecting rights. This meant that any bidder who promised to collect the highest amount of revenue was given the charge of a particular area. This led to the great exploitation of the peasantry. Cultivators in the villages they ran away due to they ran away to avoid taxation. Company was unable to rely on a certain fixed income as the revenue amount changed every year. The English East India Company now realized that it would have to work out a different mechanism which addressed these problems and assured a steady income from the agricultural revenue. Permanent Settlement In the year 1793, when Lord Cornwallis became the Governor General, he introduced a land revenue system called Permanent Settlement. It was introduced in Bengal, Bihar, Orissa and also some parts of the Madras Presidency. Zamindars were made the hereditary owners of the land. This meant that the peasants became the tenants and lost their rights to forests, ponds and other common lands. The tax amount was fixed permanently. Permanent settlement was just on the basis that would prevent corruption because revenue officials would not be able to alter the land revenue at their will. The English East India Company it also claimed that since no extra la land revenue would be asked for, any increase in revenue would be invested back in the land, thus improving the productivity. It is hoped that a new class of collaborators, the Zamindars, would be created who would be the allies of English East India Company. Supporters of the permanent settlement, they pointed out that Financial security would be created and that wastelands and forests would be bought under cultivation. The brunt of this new system fell on the peasants who were greatly oppressed. Forced labor, growing of commercial crops, these were thrust upon the peasants by the zamindars 
to meet the revenue demand often the zamindars were unable to meet the commitment of land revenue and consequently up to one third of the zamindaris were auctioned triathwari system while the permanent settlement was introduced across eastern india there was no zamindari system that existed in south india thomas munro the governor of madras presidency between 1820 and 1827 he initiated a land revenue arrangement which came to be known as the riyathwari system this system was introduced in bombay and madras presidencies sindh region and assam the word riyath means peasant The land revenue arrangements were made directly with the tiller of the land. Revenue system would be revised every year. There were no limits on the amounts of land that the riyat could cultivate. Riyatwari system was adopted because it was felt that since there were no intermediaries such as zamindar, the revenue collected would be higher. The riyat would also be protected from exploitation in actual practice however the riyat became nothing more than a tenant of the land with the government as the owner the percentage of the tax was very high if the peasant could not pay the tax on time the land was sold off so he became dependent on the money leaders money lenders who were highly exploitative peasants were reduced to a miserable state in this image we see thomas munro who introduced the riyatwari system mahalwari system it was introduced in northwest india punjab and parts of central india in the year 1822 it was conceived by holt makarzini according to this arrangement the village estate all mahal This was jointly owned by the village community which was also responsible for the payment of revenue heads of the families in the village they collected the revenue the rate of land revenue was changed over the time effect of these mahalwari systems the rural population of india was greatly impoverished by the introduction of these systems and the high rates of revenue they extracted administrators revenue collectors zamindars money lenders they all exploited it the peasants agrarian riots became frequent the little republics of the countryside they lost their self sufficiency this was the period of industrial revolution in europe european factories they produced goods at cheaper rates which indian craftsmen could not compete with the low demand of handicrafts it led many artisans and craftsmen to leave irrigation irrigation was not new in india tanks wells canals all these had been used for many hundreds of years with the arrival of the british the modern technology was introduced to bring back more land under cultivation and irrigate more acres barrages were constructed across the rivers to draw more water into a network of canals under sir arthur cotton the british constructed a number of irrigation works on rivers such as kaveri and godavari however the construction of irrigation facilities was not adequate to keep up with the expansion of agriculture this was demonstrated by the wave of famines which broke out during this period technology very few technological improvements were made in agriculture the old types of tools were still being used the use of chemical fertilizers was also significant agricultural colleges were very few in number most of the farmers were illiterates and the government too did not take any responsibility of modernizing let's see about a case study the state punjab 
the canal irrigation in the punjab during the british period it completely changed the character of the area earlier the persian wheel was a widespread mode of irrigation the british rule after a period of civil war it brought political stability to punjab the new government aimed to increase agricultural production rapidly canal colonies were established to promote agriculture starting with the upper bari dau canal in 1860 61 a number of canals were constructed to benefits areas like patiala nabha and ludhiana the water of five rivers was used to turn pastoral and forest lands into farmlands crops like wheat cotton oil seeds pulses was grown agriculture in punjab flourished due to largest canal irrigation system in the world recent uprisings british land revenue systems and taxation policies these took a toll on the prosperity of the peasantry the growing discontent of the farmers culminated in a number of peasants revolting and uprisings some of them was caused by disposition of old zamindars who had failed to pay the land revenue poverty and exploitation by rich money lenders also made them a target of peasants during the revolts the revolt of 1857 was one of the largest uprising in the 20th century mahatma gandhi involved the peasants in mass movements which also aimed to address their problems many of them were imprisoned during the non cooperation and civil disobedience movements this period also saw the formation of a number of kisan sabhas which tried to represent the peasants and create the indigo rebellion during the year 1859 and 1860 indigo is a tropical plant which produces a blue dye which is used to color the textiles the british textile factories in places like manchester created a huge demand for indigo when indigo production declined in the caribbean region in the 18th century the british turned to india for its supply indigo in india was cultivated to through two systems niche and ryoti under the niche system indigo was grown in plantations owned by rich planters the crop was cultivated by laborers in the ryoti system planters force the cultivators take loan from them in return for growing indigo on their lands the crop was sold at a fixed low rate most of the indigo grown in india was through the ryoti system peasants had no choice in the matter they were forced to grow indigo the crop left the land barren and unusable for growing the other food crops the cultivators were unable to repay the loans and they were stuck in a cycle of debt the growing impoverishment of the peasants and insensitivity of the rulers it led to a number of peasant revolts one of the most violent uprising of the peasants was indigo rebellion of the bengal of year 1859 1860 the resentment of the peasants against the planters it created an explosive situation the peasants were supported by the intellectual class the present the peasants bravely faced the cruel repression repression of the authorities and refused to give in the british finally had to appoint the indigo commission which interviewed many peasants the complete refusal of the peasants to cultivate indigo it showed the popular sentiment the commission blamed the greed of the planters for causing the rebellion and refused to force the ryots to grow indigo in future the organized leadership the initiative of the peasants and coordination of the resistance contributed to the success of rebellion indigo cultivation was virtually eradicated from all the districts of bengal in parts of bihar forced indigo cultivation continued into the 20th century even the creation of a synthetic dye 
which could be used as a substitute for indigo did not end this system mahatma gandhi's visit to the champaran in 1917 it helped to bring the struggle of indigo farmers in the area to the attention of the nation in this image we see the indigo workers being forced to work in the plantations